Indian American chess prodigy from New Jersey, Apimanyu Mishra becomes the youngest grandmaster in history, earning his final norm at the age of 12 years, 4 months and 25 days. With Karyakin having earned his title at age 12 years and 7 months, Mishra bettered the previous mark by approximately 66 days. Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you that historical game which allowed Abhimanyu Mishra to break Sergei Karyakin's record and become the youngest grandmaster in history. This is truly a historical moment and let's congratulate Mishra on this amazing feat. Mishra earned his third and final norm at the Vezerkepso Grandmaster Mixed Tournament in Budapest, Hungary defeating the 15-year-old Indian Grandmaster Leon Luke Mendonca with the black pieces. And now, without further ado, we will go through that game. This game Mishra played with the black pieces and we will follow the game from his perspective. Mendonca opened up with d4, to which Mishra answered with knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5. The good old Grunfeld defense is on the board, against which white is choosing the so-called Brinkman attack. Bishop g7, e3, black castled, rook c1, c5. Other alternatives are bishop e6 or c6. In the game we see c5, d takes c5, bishop e6, knight f3, knight c6. Of course all this is a well-known theoretical stuff. Knight g5, hitting on e6 and knight d8. Earlier rook f8 or rook a d8 have been seen with which black is allowing white to uh, damage his pawn structure. But in this game we see knight d8 answer. And in this case already black wants to recapture on e6 with the knight. And seems like that this is a novelty. Bishop g3 d takes c4. Knight takes e6 was met with knight takes e6. All in all we have an equality on the board. And... Yeah, the players have better chances, nothing special. The position looks drawish, but uh, the players kept on playing. Yeah, even the fact that soon more pieces will be traded off. Uh, bishop c2 is also playable, not allowing knight d3, but in the game we see king e2 allowing black to damage his queen side pawn structure. Soon more exchanges will follow yes the first pair of rooks are gone and then the second pair of rooks are also removed yeah the position looks uh, very drawish but the players kept on playing and i really love this type of uh, fighting spirit you know that they are not agreeing to a draw that early because the end games are really tricky and soon we will see that the both sides will start making mistakes one after another. Uh, knight b6 is better. Still keeping under control this d5 square, hitting on a4. But in the game we see knight c3 and that allowed black to uh, exchange the bishop with the knight. And seems like that this type of a configuration is better for black. The knight will feel better than black's dark squared bishop. Black is putting all his pawns on white squares. This is what you should do when you are playing an endgame against the bishop and f takes e4. Uh, so it's strange that black didn't recapture with the king. This could allow black to get a more active position uh, for his king. But in the game we see f takes e4. King b4, knight d2. Black knight is hurrying to find targets and h5. Uh, h5 is uh, strange because this is allowing white to gain advantage, better to play knight uh, c4. Instead we see h5, king takes a4, king c4. At the cost of giving up that pawn, black managed to activate his king, but at this point white has uh, total control over the position, white is dominating. Bishop f6, king b4, king takes b7. Well, a decent move, but bishop e7 check is stronger. 
let's take a look at this variation how white can prevail and then only then white can win the pawn on b7 and march towards black pawns on the king side and then king e6 or b4 white is dominating instead we see king takes b7 king takes b5 king c7 king c4 king d6 king d3 this is a mistake at this point the move which could allow black to keep the balance is knight a1 if king e5 then king d3 and then knight c2 uh, knight a1 looks to be a study like move right instead we see king d3 and so we reached a position seen in the previous variation our uh, king e5 is a terrible mistake yeah king e5 is a mistake it was better to play b4 or i don't know king e6 but we see this uh, huge mistake by mendonga and now let's see what's the problem with it can you figure out what's the problem with king e5 well that steps into knight f3 check which mendonga overlooked after king e5 this time Mendonga accepted the peace sacrifice but that's already losing well king f6 is better in this case white can still keep the balance and we have equal we have an equality yes both players are going for a queen promotion in time instead we see g takes f3 and this is losing and now let's see how Mishra won this dramatic game and became the youngest grandmaster in history yeah if uh, here then h4 can follow restricting the movement of the bishop instead we see b4 and the bishop dropped and the thing is that after uh, f1 queen if you also go for a queen promotion then queen f4 check will follow and you will lose your queen that's why at this point resignation followed putting the king on e5 was a very awkward idea you know at least it was better to make a move like king e6 yeah in here king e6 is a decent move it's allowing white to win but we have what we have and mishra is the youngest grandmaster in history so this is it dear chess lovers this was a dramatic end game end games are really very tricky one need to play with engines accuracy something which both players failed to do and in this game the luck was on mishra's side but once again congratulations to mishra his team his family and his nation in the end the chess puzzle for you a simple one where the task is to win with the white pieces as usual we'll wait for your answer in the comment section Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video.